Jerome Corsi, who's an associate of longtime Trump ally Roger Stone, telling CNN that he will not sign a plea deal with the special counsel, Robert Mueller. CNN crime and justice reporter Shimon Prokupes is joining me right now. He's got all of the very latest on this. This has been going one way and then the other and all playing out very publicly, oddly enough. Shimon, what's the latest here? Yeah, now very publicly. Look, uh, Jim, Jerome Corsi did an interview uh, this morning with a conservative outlet where he essentially explains why he's not going to take this plea. He says that the special counsel offered him uh, a plea deal, essentially that it would be one count to lying uh, and that he's refusing to take that plea deal because essentially if he does take the plea deal, then he's lying uh, about the fact that they're saying that he's lying. So it's a very sort of confusing story that he gives in this interview. He explains uh, that he knew about the Julian Assange, the Podesta emails through his own work. He kind of connected the dots in August and realized that Julian Assange had the Podesta emails and that was probably, he was probably going to release them uh, in October. He, uh, in this interview, of course, he calling it the October surprise. And of course, Julian Assange would know uh, how to do that. So he gives a pretty good explanation of what he claims is how he knew about these emails. He said he had no uh, knowledge from Julian Assange and, he, and he, he never spoke to him about it. He never communicated with anyone about it. And clearly what Corsi says is that the special counsel has been asking him questions about whether or not he was that conduit between Julian Assange and Roger Stone and essentially the campaign and whether or not anyone in the campaign knew in advance that these emails were going to surface. And that's not the only thing going on right now, but stick with me. Uh, Shimon, I want to talk about this breaking news with CNN legal analyst, former federal prosecutor Shan Wu is joining us, and CNN legal analyst Renato Mariotti. He's also a former federal prosecutor. Renato, you saw this news from Jerome Corsi this morning. First, he was in negotiations with the special counsel over a plea deal. Now he says he will not sign it and they can put him in jail as long as they want. What's your reaction to this today? Well, you know, he's very foolish to be discussing this publicly. Uh, whenever I've negotiated plea deals on either side, either now for my clients or when I was a federal prosecutor, uh, it's best to keep these negotiations and discussions private. Uh, everything Mr. Corsi is telling CNN and telling uh, these right-wing outlets uh, can be used by Mueller against him. Uh, I suspect that Mueller will go forward and, and bring charges uh, if uh, Corsi doesn't change his mind very soon. Shan, what's your reaction to this? Because I do wonder when it comes to Jerome Corsi specifically, um, with when it's when you're talking about negotiations or now lack thereof with the Mueller team, should the president is there reason for President Trump to be worried when he sees this playing out um, publicly, or at the very least, or is this all Roger Stone should be very worried because it's all seems to be focused at the moment around Roger Stone and who knew what and when when it came to WikiLeaks and those stolen Democratic emails. Well, Kate, un unquestionably, Roger Stone should be worried. Uh, I, I agree with Renato. It's very foolish of uh, Corsi to take this course, but this seems to be the age of the Twitter plea negotiations now, which is very <laughs> peculiar. <laughs> and the one yeah. voice that's silent on Twitter, of course, is the Mueller folks. They remain silent, so we don't know what they have. But there is no way that Corsi can have met that many hours without them knowing everything about him. So he has really no defense left whatsoever. I think the president should be worried about two things. One, of course, generally, if there really is a path back to Stone and that the president knew or encouraged uh, WikiLeaks getting these emails and releasing them, th that's a big, big problem. The secondary worry is simply the overall continued path of various people in his circle getting indicted and pleading guilty to false statements, giving more cooperation that he and his team don't fully know what they're talking about. And that generally is going to be worrisome for him. But it's just hard to know whether this is something really substantive leading yeah. to real collusion or not, or whether it's more these folks getting caught with their actual lies, but not exactly on the Russian interference part. Uh, Renato, when, from what we are seeing play out publicly, does this definitely mean, in your, if you had to guess, that Jerome Corsi will be indicted? Well, sure. I mean, you have a man, uh, assuming he's, what he's saying is accurate, that he was right. told that he was going to be indicted and that he was in negotiations with Mueller. Uh, there, the, the special counsel and no other federal prosecutor is going to tell you that you're going to be indicted if they don't intend to do that. So you can expect an indictment, to, of course, to come out. Uh, and then, you know, I, I have to say, I don't think that 
this is somebody that Mueller is just going after on his own. I suspect that he is trying to put pressure on Corsi because he wants to uh, you have Corsi as a witness against Stone. And Stone is somebody who, of course, was in frequent contact with the president, uh, which uh, makes him potentially a very important person in this puzzle. And, and Shimon, this is not all that's happening today with regard to goings on with the, with the Russia investigation. George Papadopoulos, he's going to jail. You got Paul Manafort's team heading back into court. What else? Yeah, so Papadopoulos, we're waiting for him to uh, finally serve his sentence. You know, he'd asked the judge to delay it uh, because of also a Roger Stone associate who's been suing uh, to basically say, to challenge the Mueller authority, say it's unconstitutional. Uh, so he was hoping, Papadopoulos, to wait out that decision. A judge uh, said, no, that's not happening. You're to report to jail today. We're also waiting uh, to see if we learn any details on the Manafort cooperation. Uh, there is a report that's due to the court. Remember, it was just about 10 days ago where the special counsel had asked for, another, for a 10-day extension, which is a little bit unusual here because they've been normally asking for 60-day uh, extension. So maybe we may learn more about Paul Manafort's cooperation. It's really unclear. That would obviously be uh, key details in this entire investigation. Uh, and really, th that's about it for now. You know, we wait. Alan Dershowitz, a, a, of course, a longtime Harvard Law professor, someone who's been a supporter of the president. Um, he had this to say yesterday about the Mueller report whenever it does come out. Listen. I think the report is going to be devastating to the president, and I know that the president's team is already working on a response to the report. When I say devastating, I mean it's going to paint a picture that's going to be politically very devastating. I still don't think it's going to make a criminal case because collusion is not criminal. I mean, you give me your take. It doesn't seem that Alan Dershowitz is, it's unlikely that he's been in communication with the Mueller team in terms of exactly what's being put in the report, but what do you think of what he said? You know, I have uh, gone up against Alan on television and on Twitter and el elsewhere, and he's consistently had the very, I think, radical legal position that nothing that uh, Trump has done could possibly be a crime. Uh, he's still sticking to that. Uh, this seems to me a way of walking it back a little bit by saying, look, he's, he's done some things that are damaging, but still nonetheless sticking to, I'd say, his legal position. Uh, look, there's no question that if you string together a lot of the things that the president has done just on obstruction of justice alone, uh, that would be, you would think that would be politically damaging. I'm not a political expert, but it would seem problematic for the president. But, you know, I, I will say that uh, Dershowitz is in a, in a very, very small minority of people who think it's impossible for any of that to amount to being a crime.